Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be covering, um, it's more of just a coding uh, related topic rather than Unity specific, but obviously I'll show you it in Unity and you can go away and, you know, test what uh, systems work well with it. So we're going to be going into delegates and how to use them, how to set them up, and I'll cover a few uses. I'm not actually going to be like showing every use. This is going to be quite a short video, but um, I'll mention some uses and obviously you'll understand how that works. Uh, I want to start off by thanking Patreons as usual, uh, Paul Robinson, Phil Bourne, thanks for the $5 donations. Um, if you want to help support me, then the channel, uh, the link is in the description of the channel, sorry. Uh, video, I can't speak. Anyway, um, yeah, so on my channel, before we start as well, um, I've put out one of these post poll things. I don't actually know as a viewer how you get onto them, I guess you just see them on your feed or maybe you see it on the channel. But um, I've just put out a poll basically, you can read it, you can vote. Uh, obviously the clear winner at the moment is making a like series of particular games from scratch So I just want people's ideas now. I might put up an, another poll of what kinds of games so Obviously you could say like, you know um, Card game or like first-person shooter or whatever. I just want to um, see what people want um, and go with that I could actually continue with the 2d roguelike like series But I, that that series never seemed to get much attention and not many people seemed to want to do it. I mean, I can continue with it, but I was feeling like even if I was to do a roguelike series, I could do it um, third person top down. I think the main reason why I lost motivation in that series is because I was having to work with sprites and 2D, and I do like 2D games, but I cannot do 2D like sprites and images. I could obviously go for asset packs. I'd rather make some models myself for 3D top down than that, so I might actually do that. I might start it from scratch again, but like speed through the few first videos um, until we get back to the point where we're at, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Um, anyway, yeah, so feel free to vote on that. It would help a lot. So anyway, delegates. Um, this, you don't need anything for your scene. Um, this is just going to all be test stuff. I might use a bit of UI to um, show something off. So, I don't know, make a panel. Um, and we might just put some text on it for now so I can use that in the example. Um, let's just make a big text. Make it big. Okay. Um, I don't know what I'm going to use this for exactly, but we can use this as an example. So what a delegate is, well, um, the best way I can describe it is, you think about maybe you have a function in your code for, um, I don't know, unlocking something. And when you unlock something, you want to uh, maybe change a boolean somewhere to say that it's unlocked. And then you might want to um, tell some notification thing to fire off you know, a notification. You might need to update the UI and so on. You you'll have loads of things that happen. Um, and that works fine, right? Anything you can, I'm going to show you in this video, you can do normally. But the problem is, this. well, not the problem, well, the benefit of this is it just makes life easier in some cases. So, um, yeah, let's say you have that, right? So you'd have some code, uh, you, had a, you would have a function somewhere. Uh, void, um, you know, unlock spell. If it was unlocking a spell. So you would have the first bit be like, um, you know, set unlocked bool to true and then um like update ui um you know notify player uh unlock something you get what i mean like it's gonna do loads of things and every time you do something you're gonna have to remember you know oh what do i want to you know fire off for this and it's just sometimes you'll miss something out and then if you change one of these things then you know the problem of having code in loads of places the same code is that if you change it in one you have to change in all of them so it's just one of those best practice things so obviously, yeah, you can do this, and a lot of you might have this, and I have this in some places. It makes sense to do it in some places if it's simple. But the benefit of delegates, let's show you. So how a delegate would work is you would have public delegate void. Presumably it's a void, but it doesn't have to be, obviously. It can return things. Um, I'm trying to think, actually, is there really anywhere? Like, where would it return to? Um, mo most of the time you use voids, I guess. So, so how it works is we give it a name, just like a function name, but this is going to be... Um, like it's like a trigger name so we'll put uh, on um, spell unlocked for example right on spell unlocked and we could just have it like that right that could be our delegate it's just a function name kinda um, with no parameters and it's a void so it looks very much like the structure of a function just declaring it at the top um, and obviously you can put parameters in so let's say you would obviously you might have a spell class so you put spell um, here okay and then what that means is Let's say in this script, okay, this is the script for handling unlocking a spell, okay? That's why we have on spell unlocked here. You would, um, in here, you wouldn't have any of these lines. You would literally just have, um, if on spell unlocked does not equal null, uh, 
then you would say, uh, oh, sorry, no. So basically, this is the name of the delegate, but you have to actually have, um, and this isn't going to work because obviously we don't have the spell class, but um, well, actually, no, fine, let's make the spell class. We'll do this uh, quite quickly just to get it to work. So, all right, here we are. We, we've got spell class, and the spell class has some data. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go into making a proper spell class. We'll just have um, a spell scriptable object. We'll do the standard. You've seen all this before. I don't need to cover all this. File name. Uh, spell, menu name, spell, put like new spell. Okay, uh, as public string, uh, spell name, public um, int spell mana, I don't know, cost. We don't need to make a whole spell uh, class, that's just for example. So yeah, we unlock a spell and the data it has is that spell. Now what we can have under here is we have a public on spell unlocked, so it's the type, the delegate that we declared. I'm just going to call it the same thing, but with like a lowercase o. So it's like a variable. And then we can say if on spell unlocked, here we go, if this is null, okay? So this is declaring how it works, and this is saying, hey, we have one in this script, okay? Um, if it's not null, then uh, when we unlock a spell, we want to say um, on spell unlocked, and it takes in a spell, so we'll just say. Um, Okay, so this should make sense to you. Oh, why is that going gray? Um, it can be simplified, can it? Oh, that's just, okay. I didn't actually know that. Well, yeah, that's just a different way of writing it in one line. Uh, so that's basically saying um, if it's if it exists, if there is any, then we can invoke it. So invoke is just basically the way of calling it. But because it's not a normal function, how it works is when you invoke this thing here, anything that is... I guess people call subscribed. Anything that is subscribed to it um, will get called as well. So let's say, for example, um, yeah, we unlock spell here, right? And let's say we have another script in our scene on the UI, right? Canvas. Um, we can have a script on here. Um, spell UI manager, for example. And this might handle uh, some spell UI, right? Maybe it's uh, the spell book, you know, whatever. And this will have a um, serialized field, private text. Uh, obviously, I need to import um, using Unity Engine.ui. Okay, so we have this spell text and a spell UI manager. Uh, instead of writing a function here that we call from here and other places, instead of writing that function for updating the UI, let's say the UI the function might be a public void. Um, I don't know. Uh, update spell UI, and all it does is it says um, spell text is equal to, and then I don't know. Oh, we have to know what thing to update it to. Well, let's say the spell uh, text is for the most recently unlocked spell. Okay, let's say it's the most recently unlocked spell. The thing is, um, we want to have access to this function because this this thing knows what spell we've got. Okay, this this function, um, when we unlock a spell, anything subscribed to it has access to the spell because we pass it in here. So what I can do is, which is quite clever, is I can say in here, as long as we have referenced this delegate example, um, we can use the um, delegate. So the one way is making this a, a static class so that we can a singleton, so we can like reference it from anywhere, which is the normal way you do it. Uh, the inefficient way, which I'm going to do now really quickly, is just um, in the void start. So uh, private void start. I'm just going to say, um, let's have a private delegate example. So we can just store the uh, reference to the script. So delegate example. And we can just say delegate example is equal to find object of type delegate example. So in a small scene with like no items, this will be not that bad, but you really want to stay away from using find object of type. It basically just searches through everything in the scene till it finds something with that script on it. Because it's a very small scene, I want to do this quickly. Uh, it won't take very long to do. So yeah, we're going to find the um, that and we're going to store it. And once we've stored it, we can actually then say, um, we want inside this script to be able to um, get this function called whenever um, it's updated, whenever the spell unlock, whenever this line's called, we want a line in here to be called. But we don't want to tell this 
this script does not need to know about the UI, right? This script just knows, hey, we've unlocked a spell. Then everything else that cares about unlocking spells will be like, hey, I want to do something. You know, just let me know when it happens and what happens. So we can say um, delegate example dot on spell unlocked plus equals update spell UI. Um, no overload for update spell UI matches. Um, uh, 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 uh. What's that? You don't do that. Let me let me just quickly finish this off. So spell text dot text is equal to. Um, there we go. So yeah, basically it has to be the right type. Um, because obviously it's going to pass in a spell. Uh, so we can call this function what we want. But what, what we've said is, when um, this on spell unlocked thing gets invoked here, then we want to call this function. Now, basically, I know it looks weird, uh, you know, adding that to it. But it's basically, it's sort of like a list of things to get called. And we're saying, hey, we want to be part of that list. So we're going to add ourselves to it. Um, obviously, if we had this run twice, it would actually call this twice whenever it happened. You could add it twice. Uh, so just make sure you, if you add it, just do it in the start or something so that it only happens that one time, unless you did want it multiple times somewhere. But we can say spell dot uh, spell name. Whoops, spell name. So this class here, this class here that uh, unlocks the spell has no idea that this spell manager even exists. It just says, hey, other classes, you can, you know, you can listen to me and then whenever I update, uh, unlock a spell, you can do whatever you want, right? You can, you can... Uh, change the UI and do this, that, the other. So if we, on the canvas, say, yeah, let's just uh, drag in the text. Um, let's quickly just make, like, some spells. Um, where have I got compilers? Where's the uh, create? Oh, there, spell. All right, so I'll just put, um, you know, fire blast, the usual uh, spell name. Fire blast. I don't care about the cost, to be honest. Um, I shard. I'll just do one more. We'll have um, corruption. All right, so we've got these spells, right? And you might have these spells in your game. And then normally in your code, you might have loads of lines saying, you know, all right, so we've unlocked a spell, so do this there and do that there and have reference to this. Rather than this script caring about all the other scripts that it knows uh, that it needs to do things with, you can just tell it to do this. So if we go to our, I don't know, we can put it on anywhere, to be honest. Let's just create an empty object, though, um, to drop the... Oh, I did not mean to do that. Um, create an empty. Reset it. Um, managers. All right, so if we add the delegate example here, so that's this code, um, and we can add a button or something onto the UI. I don't know. Um, hmm, how should we do this? Yeah, let, let's add a um, button onto the canvas so that we can trigger it. So if we add a button, just put it here. Um, I don't care about the text, we'll just, have, we'll just have the button. And when the button thing gets called, we'll call the delegate example unlock spell. Um, public void unlock spell. So that we can actually call it from outside. So if we call delegate example unlock spell um, when we press the button. Okay, let's go. So if I press, I think I've linked everything up correctly. So if I press play and press this, nothing happens because we can't convert nothing to spell. It says, wait, we'll see. So let's, let's select a spell, corruption, corruption, fire blast, fire blast, and I shard, I shard. So as you see, this actually works. So th this script here, this uh, delegate example, the thing with the unlocking the spell, doesn't have a clue that spell UI manager exists. It doesn't care that there's UI. It just cares, you know, hey, we've unlocked a spell. And then everything else, everything else can be like, hey, I want to do something when that's unlocked. So we'll get reference to it. It's better for the external scripts to listen in rather than this one to call outwards because you end up having more lines of code and referencing things and grabbing this, that, the other. Once you've done this, it's done, right? You're just listening in and whenever it gets called, it basically is a call back to this. And it's a very useful system. So as I said, you can use it for UI when you um, unlock something, changing a boolean there, doing this. 
it's completely what you want to use it for. But um, let's say, for example, I saw this in, I mean, you probably all know of Brekkies. If you actually watched my channel, you've probably seen his. Uh, in his little mini RPG series, he had um, unlocking armor. And when he unlocked armor, it would pass in old armor and new armor. So then anything that cared about changing armor, so obviously UI and comparing this at the other, or whatever, you can um, have the data on the old armor and the new armor, do stuff with that, uh, even without this armor script caring about whatever else there is in the game. Uh, it's very good, it's single, um, like each class has its own use, it should be um, good at what it's doing, and like that's the only thing it should do. And then there's also like dependencies, like each script shouldn't depend on other scripts, like obviously yeah it should to a point, but um, you don't want every script to be tied in so tightly that like if one script gets deleted you have a million errors. Like you want, because think about it right, if I deleted this um, delegate example, uh, sorry, well, that would cause problems because this is listening in. If I destroyed this, the delegate example wouldn't care, but normally it would. Um, so it just saves a lot of time. If you add a feature and then you said, now nah, I want to change that feature, you don't have to change the other features that are calling it or whatever. You don't need to care. This doesn't care about what name the function is. As long as you don't change this on spell unlocked, which you shouldn't because it's quite generic, you know, just when the spell's unlocked. Um, but yeah. I hope uh, you understand why to use this, and or how and why, which is the whole point of these videos. Um, make good use of it, I encourage you greatly. I'm actually gonna go back to working on my game after this, I'm gonna be using them in more places, because um, I've been refactoring code, uh, changing a lot of things that I made the first time just quickly to actually be efficient, and this is one thing I'm definitely gonna be using wherever I can, so. Uh, I hope you agree with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already subscribed, then of course go ahead, that would mean a lot. Uh, the link to our Discord server is in the description below. And apart from that, thanks for watching, and goodbye.